Here's the brief news from the world over this week. A deal has yet to be reached in nuclear talks with Iran. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry announced on Thursday that the P5 plus one group of nations would, quote, not be rushed into an agreement with Tehran on its controversial nuclear program. The negotiations aim at ending a 13-year standoff by curtailing Iran's nuclear aspirations in exchange for lifting of sanctions on the regime. Speaking on the eve of yet another deadline to present a deal to Congress, Kerry said the issues still being resolved are a time frame for lifting the sanctions, as well as whether weapons inspectors will be allowed into the country. The biggest sticking point, however, remains Iran's insistence that the U.N. arms embargo be lifted. If Congress does not receive a proposed deal by Friday, the review period extends to 60 days, further jeopardizing any negotiated settlement. And another priest has been abducted by Islamic militants in Syria. According to Fides News Service, Franciscan father Dia Aziz disappeared from his village in the Christian town of Yakubia on July 4th. He was last seen meeting with a local emir that afternoon. Fides also reports that two militants later returned to the parish for the missing priest's diabetes medication, suggesting Father Aziz is still alive. Representatives from the Franciscan custody in the Holy Land say they've not heard from the priest or his captors and have no explanation for his abduction. And President Obama is now calling the struggle against the Islamic State a, quote, long-term campaign. His comments come one month after the administration came under fire for announcing it did not have a complete strategy for combating ISIS. Following a meeting on Monday with members of his national security team, the president said he would increase efforts to disrupt ISIS's cash flow and step up the fight against the terrorist group in Syria by training and equipping a moderate Syrian opposition. On Tuesday, Secretary of Defense Ash Carter revealed that so far very few Syrian fighters have been trained to battle the Islamic State. As of July 3rd, we are currently training about 60 fighters. This number is much smaller than we'd hoped for at this point, partly because of the vetting standards. Carter later told the Senate Armed Services Committee that the U.S. is currently screening 7,000 potential recruits. More on the Syrian insurgency with Walid Fares in our next segment. Cuba last week, Vietnam this week. President Barack Obama continues his administration's push for improved relations with those respective communist regimes. On Tuesday, the president received the head of the Vietnamese Communist Party, Nguyen Phu Thuong, at the Oval Office. The president mentioned the two countries' political differences and America's concerns about human rights and religious freedom. Still, he noted the emergence of a constructive relationship. We've made significant progress on uh, deepening our uh, cooperation in the areas of education, science, technology, uh, climate change, public health, uh, as well as security issues. Outside the White House, the meeting drew human rights and political protests from Vietnamese Americans who fled Vietnam during and after the war. In a related note, Vatican Secretary of State Cardinal Pietro Parolin met with Hanoi's top Communist Party official in Rome. The Holy See and Vietnam have been in talks for years to establish diplomatic relations. The Vietnamese government remains reluctant to permit religious freedom, including Vatican autonomy in the appointment of bishops. More government funding for Planned Parenthood. The Obama administration announced another $5.6 million of funding for the abortion giant during the July 4th holiday. The grants came on the heels of a new report showing that Planned Parenthood does one-third of all abortions in the U.S. An Americans United for Life report reveals how the billion-dollar abortion provider has increased government funding, profits, and market share in recent years. According to its most recent data, Planned Parenthood conducted 327,000 abortions in 2013. 
And Pope Francis has taken his climate change ecology message on the road. On the first leg of his South American visit in Ecuador, the Holy Father warned against the exploiting of that country's environmental riches. He said on Tuesday, we are obliged towards society and future generations. We cannot bequeath this rich heritage to them without proper care for the environment. Turning his comments toward capitalism, he said, the goods of the earth are meant for everyone, and however much someone may parade his property, it has a social mortgage. The Pope's comments appear critical of Ecuador's economic policy. President Rafael Correa has been harshly criticized by environmentalists and others for his mining and oil drilling advocacy. That advocacy, however, is credited with spurring an economic resurgence that has lifted more than a million people out of poverty during Correa's eight years in office. And in what will go down in history as one of the most outrageous gifts ever given a pope on Wednesday, Bolivian President Evo Morales offered Pope Francis a hand-carved hammer and sickle crucifix. The beaming president spoke of his fondness for the Holy Father and gave him a matching medallion. Pope Francis was not too keen on the mashup of the iconic symbols of atheist communism and Christianity. The Pope can be seen and heard saying to Morales in Spanish, this is not okay. According to Bolivian officials, it was a replica of a crucifix made by Father Luis Espinal, a Jesuit human rights activist. The Pope actually stopped to pray at the spot where Father Espinal's body was found in Bolivia. He said the priest was a victim of interests who did not want him to fight for the freedom of Bolivia. And the effort to remove the statue of Blessed Father Junipero Serra from the U.S. Capitol is on hold for now. Since 1931, the Franciscan missionary and saint-to-be is among the 100 Americans honored in Statuary Hall. However, the California legislature has been pushing to exchange the Blessed Serra statue for one of shuttle astronaut Sally Ride, the first American woman to travel to space. That advocacy is being hailed by LGBT activists as Ride identified herself as a lesbian. Legislation has already been passed in the California State Senate overwhelmingly. The postponement of the measure is being done out of deference to Pope Francis's upcoming trip to the U.S. in September. The Pope will be addressing Congress just a few feet away from Statuary Hall and just one day after he canonizes Father Sarah as a saint at the National Basilica. And finally, in probably the oddest story of the week, and that's saying a lot, the Pope is being put on trial by the Sanhedrin. According to two Israeli news organizations, a reestablished and self-declared Israeli Sanhedrin will try Pope Francis for the Vatican's establishment of relations with the state of Israel, or Palestine, rather. Yes, this is the same Jewish high court of 71 sages who tried Jesus during his passion. The Sanhedrin assert in a letter sent to the Vatican, quote, the sole God-given right to the land of Israel is to the nation of Israel. The Sanhedrin also took umbrage with Pope Francis purportedly calling Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas an angel of peace. They are asking for a retraction and an apology. Otherwise, the court of Mount Zion will convene on September 20th to judge the Vatican in its presence or in absentia. Good luck with that.